Uh, welcome all. I see there's still some people coming in. Lindsay um, is so kind to uh, to let people in and she's also monitoring the chat. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, don't send them to me uh, directly in a personal message because uh, I will not be monitoring the chat. Um, so what can you expect today? Um, so we're going to have a look at Readwise. So most people are probably already somewhere, somewhat familiar with Readwise, um, either the name or some of the functionality. Um, I am trying to cram everything in one hour. Uh, I don't know if it will, uh, it will work out, but I want to have a look at each and every bit of Readwise functionality. Uh, because it's not a cheap solution. It's, I think, about $8 a month for um, a complete account. Um, and most people, and myself included, when I just started with uh, Readwise, uh, most people just use it as a very expensive integration tool. So if you would only use it as an integration tool to get your highlights, for example, from Instapaper to uh, Evernote, for example, um, there are other tools for that. It's, uh, it's the best tool for that, but it's not the cheapest. So uh, before we dive in, I want to have a quick look of what we're going to discuss and then launch in a very short poll, just three questions, but it gives me a little bit of a better understanding of, um, of who you are. So uh, again, I put this link in the chat. You get two months for free if you are not a Readwise member yet. Uh, I don't earn a penny of this, so uh, don't you worry. Then um, we will not dive into the sources that you can save with Readwise, but I've summed up um, a few here, or actually these are all that are currently supported by, uh, by Readwise. So you can import Kindle, iBooks, PDF uh, highlights, into paper, Pocket, since recently also Feedly, so I think this has just been uh, released a few weeks ago. And also the PDF, it's pretty new. Um, so you can essentially just send a PDF that's highlighted, including notes. You can send it to Readwise and they will extract all the highlights. Um, then Medium, Hypothesis, Twitter, Air. Air is a uh, podcast listening app but they do also do transcripts. So when you save a snippet of audio, uh, they will also transcribe that snippet of audio for you. So very handy. Um, Readwise also has a really good app. I use it on uh, iOS, but you can, uh, you can OCR. Uh, so, you, so you can take a photo and then Readwise will recognize the text. So that's OCR, uh, optical character recognition. You can also enable supplemental highlights, Goodreads highlights. We won't go into that today. Um, and there's also free form input. So if you have maybe a CSV file with many highlights, um, you can import it and you can even import one by one. So it's an extremely versatile tool. Um, what else? Okay, we'll, we'll dive into the capture, um, the capture process. So highlights, notes, and how to structure them with tags. We'll have a look at the review uh, functionality of Readwise, so daily Readwise, and how I do progressive summarization within Readwise. Um, and then also output, obviously it's very important. So we'll discuss very briefly how to set up integration and uh, thinking on Twitter. This is actually one of the tools I use to deeper process um, what, I, what I learn or what I've read in the past. So um, if there are questions um, you can, and, and you want to inter uh, interrupt, um, you can also use the uh, raise your hands uh, feature. So um, if you go in Zoom to participants in uh, at the bottom, there's this raise hand feature and I can see that on the screen. So I have your, uh, I've got a gallery view enabled now. So if you have a question, just use the raise hand feature and it will call on you or alternatively put your question in the chat and Lindsay will, uh, will cover it. Um, Lindsay, are there any questions before we start? 
Um, just uh, some questions about PDF highlights and um, will we get the outline shown right now in Rome to add to our own notes? So, okay, so the PDFs, um, you can send a PDF to add at readwise.io, but I will link in a bit, I will link to the article because they have a help database where you can find all the instructions. And the other question, Lindsay, was? Uh, whether or not the outline in Rome will be available via Rome, or do they add their own? Um, this is in my personal database, but um, I, I can obviously copy paste it. So um, let me think. Yeah, I will, uh, before the session ends, I will put a link in the chat. Um, so something I will need to do very quickly in a bit, but sure, I, I can do that. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's, uh, let's start the poll because I want to know how familiar familiar everyone is with uh, Readwise. So I am launching the poll now. You should be able to see it. And as everyone is voting, I can put this in my public database. And I have put the link to the outline on uh, in the in the chat, so you can read along. All right. Let's see the poll. So almost everyone voted. I'm going to end it now and share the results. Can you see it? Can you see the results? Perfect. So um, most people seem to uh, to use Readwise for work and themselves. The majority is using Readwise. Cool to see that almost 40% doesn't use Readwise currently. So hopefully this is a good showcase of what you can do with it. Um, and then what is your biggest challenge? Um, seems to be pretty, pretty evenly divided. Uh, doing something useful with your highlights that's um, outside the scope of this, um, of this session because we're really going to focus on Readwise, but I am going to show you how you can get your highlights out of Readwise into your note-taking app so you can take it further. Um, all right, so I am going back to sharing my screen because um, I want to, I'm actually using Rome as my presentation tool. All right, so let's start with the capture um, process. So. Before we start, there are essentially three stages in using Readwise. So you have the capture stage, you have the review stage, and you have the output stage. Most people, they only look at capture and output. They don't really use uh, Readwise for review. Um, although it's a pretty good learning tool, it has a space repetition system called Daily Readwise. It also has um, several question options, so you can have closed deletion, you can have question and answer cards, but we'll dive into those uh, in a bit. So um, capture, sounds easier than it is. Um, and this is a, a quote by uh, Daniel Dojon. Uh, I hope I pronounced his uh, last name correctly. He's the CEO of Readwise, and he says, if you highlight too much, you highlight nothing. And I definitely found this in the past that um, if I look at my old study books, they're riddled with <laughs> with highlights and they don't make sense to me because I, I would highlight way too much, way too much. So 
in, I would say since building a second brain, since discovering Tiago's teachings um, and how he highlights and how he does progressive summarization of his highlights, we'll dive into that if you're not familiar with it in a bit. But since then, I make sure I make atomic highlights. So I only highlight what I need and uh, I only highlight um, one idea per highlight. I forgot to put that here. But every highlight that I have contains one idea. So if you have read the book, uh, How to Take Smart Notes by Sunka Arendts, um, he's a very big pro a proponent of not highlighting, but taking notes. And he says, every note that you take should be atomic. So it should contain one idea. And why is that? Because if you have atomic notes and the same counts for highlights, if you have atomic notes or highlights, you can very easily link them. So if, if one highlight contains several ideas, how are you going to link it to other ideas? That's only really possible if you have an atomic highlight or atomic notes, so containing one idea. Um, and Readwise gives us the tools to do this. So uh, using tags. So there are two types of uh, reserved tags. So all Readwise tags start with a dot, so normally, for example, in, in, in most apps, uh, a tag starts with a hashtag sign, not in Readwise. In Readwise, all tags start with a dot. And there are a few reserved highlights. So uh, headings and concatenation uh, tags. So there are three heading tags and I'll show, you, show them in action in a bit. You have H1, H2, and H3. So for those familiar with HTML or just general markup, H1 is the top level. So normally, for example, if I read a book, I would highlight um, a chapter uh, title and I would uh, give it a tag H1. If there's then a section title, I would highlight it and then add the uh, tag uh, H2 and H3 is the last tag. So there are three levels that you can, uh, that you have in Readwise. And what they do, if I tag something like this, and I will show you how I do it. So, uh, for example, I have this book here, How People Learn. And as you can see, I mean, can you still see my, see my screen, by the way? Can you see Kindle? Perfect. Okay. So, I have this book, um, and every time before I, start, uh, before I read a chapter, I skim through the chapter. So I do a little exploration. So I don't start at the beginning of the chapter and I uh, read it start to finish. I always skim through it. So we start here, for example, and I always first highlight then uh, the, the chapter title. And then I tag it with dot H1 because that's the chapter title. Then I go through the chapter. I'm not even reading it. I'm just looking at the the structure so as you can see i've already i've already gone through this uh, chapter um but then i see oh this is a, a section so i highlight this part and i tag it as dot h2 and what i why i do this is because after if i go to uh to readwise you can see this H2, which was before an H2, oh, close this one, is now a title. So I can, um, sorry, here. So this is the chapter title, how we learn. And then, so how does the, uh, let's see, what are, you, what are you concerned about? So this way, I can go into Readwise and my highlights are structured the same way as the book is structured. As you can see here, sometimes I, 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 I create a, a section and I don't highlight anything. Doesn't matter because I can just delete the header later in, in Readwise. But the, the reason I do this is because afterward, I, I still have my highlights and they are structured just the way my book is structured. So it's very easy to go through this and see um, where in the book I can find the highlight. Um, Readwise also gives me the location. If I then export this, 
Um, it, it even turns it into a link I can click and then it will open uh, Kindle on, on this other, uh, on the right page. So it's very, very intelligent how Readwise works. Um, so that's for the, um, that's for the tags, um, for, the, for the heading tags. Are there questions about the heading tag so far? Hi, yeah, there is. First of all, um, the first question is, will the recording be available later? Uh, yes, but I won't publish it publicly. So I will need to find a way. Um, at least I will post it in the mentor group in Building a Second Brain and um, in, well, with my newsletter subscribers. Okay. And then the other question is, where are you tagging these and what's considered H3? Yeah. So H3 could be, um, let's see if I can find one in this book. Um, let's see. So, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't tagged anything. So H3 could be, could be anything. You, you can use these as you want. So my, my personal system is I tag chapter titles as H1 because they are the highest, the highest level. Then the, the level after it's H2. So H1 is generally used for chapter titles or part titles. And then H2 is the level under that. And then H3 is the level under that. So it's hi hierarchical. That, that's the way it, it works. Um, I hope it makes sense. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, and what was the other question, Lindsay? Sorry, I forgot it. Um, just. Uh, oh yeah, where, where I did it, where, where yeah. I do the, the tagging. So I use the tag, I use the notes functionality of the, of the note taking app. So if I use um, Insta paper, I just highlight something and then I click the add notes option in Insta paper and I just add, for example, dot H2. Um, if I read in Kindle, I use Kindle's uh, annotation capability. So here, as you can see here, oh, I can, I can uh, add a note and here I would type just H2, for example, if this were a heading. So I hope it's, it all, it's always relying on the native note-taking capabilities of the app you're using. And um, Readwise can just see all the notes that you take in those, um, in those native uh, annotation functions. That's how it works. Then there's, um, and, and I will continue if there are no questions. Then there's a second class of, uh, of tags and they are uh, concatenation tags. So what it does, it, it glues together phrases. So sometimes you have, for example, paragraph, and I will show you here. Let's see. Um, yeah. So I have this, I have this paragraph but I didn't want to highlight the entire paragraph. So there was some fluff in here. So for example, here he says, I will discuss specific techniques in later chapters. For my future self, that's not really relevant. I only want to have highlights that are relevant for my future self. So what I do, I use the concatenation tag. So I highlight this. And then again, I use Kindle's annotation feature to add a note and I type dot C1, I hope it's readable. I cannot make it bigger, unfortunately. But this, this is, says dot C1. Then the next, oh, the next portion I want to add to that highlight, I highlight then another phrase. And what would be the next tag? It's dot C2 to indicate, okay, there's a, there's a C1. And then the C2 tag has to be glued together to, the, to this tag. And I will show you in a bit how it, what it will look like. And then I also have C3. And whereas with the H1, 2, and 3, you can only use the 3. With the concatenation tag, you can, you can continue indefinitely. Um, the way it works, so obviously you, will, you don't want a highlight that's three pages long. At some point you want to start over. You want to create a new concatenated highlight. So you, what you do is simply you start again. 
you highlight something and then you add a note and you uh, type .c1. And then Readwise will know, okay, all those previous concatenation tags, they will be combined into one and we start a new series, if that makes sense. So what will it look like in Readwise? Um, oops. Uh, let's see. So in this case, it will look like this. So you see the ellipsis, so the three dots, those, those are the indications that this highlight is comprised of several highlights. So as you can see here, from an educa educational standpoint, blah, 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 okay, you can see that here, and then it stops, and then you see the ellipsis which indicates this highlight is comprised of several uh, sub-highlights. But in the end, it's still one highlight. So this is very useful to create atomic highlights, um, which is something I rely on a lot. So um, normally I would highlight an entire paragraph and then in my notes, I would create a very small summary Nowadays, that's not even necessary anymore because I create something new just by using the concatenation tag, which is pretty cool because it's, it, it, it feels like play almost. I'm reading, but I'm creating my own highlights. I'm, it doesn't feel like copying and I have to think, what am I highlighting? And is that useful for my future self? Will my future self be able to make sense of what I've highlighted? So I want to highlight just, just enough that I can, I can uh, communicate an idea into the future, even when my future self sees it one year from now. Um, but I'm not, um, I'm not overloading myself, my future self with information. So I don't really need to figure out, okay, what did I want to tell myself? Because it's already in the highlight. It's very, very atomic. So that is how I go for capturing. And it took a little bit longer than I, than I expected. So we'll need to speed up a little bit in other parts. Um, but in essence, this is capturing for uh, Readwise. You can use the same tags also for um, just to tag. So for example, I can, I can just write something like philosophy. And then this, this is not a reserve tag like the concatenation tag or the heading tag. So Readwise will just uh, interpret this as a tag. And what will that look like? Let's see, because I always add a tag to something when I tweet it. So that will just look like something like this. So I can even add tags here. Um, for me personally, it doesn't have a lot of use. I don't use tags that much in, in Readwise, except for the heading tags and the concatenation tags. But you can, you can have some kind of categorization within Readwise. Um, I know that some people use these, for example, uh, for workflow systems. So they have a tag for inbox, and then they can filter on everything that has in the inbox tag. And then they know, okay, I need to process this further. So the, the tagging system is pretty versatile um, and you can, you can create a whole workflow around it. I'm not going to discuss it because I don't have a workflow around it except for the heading and the concatenation tags. Before we move on to uh, the next part, are there any questions? There was a question um, about Kindle and iPad and if you can on the iPad make notes that was answered affirmatively but do the yeah. tags only work in Kindle and can you also use them with PDFs? Um, yeah, well, you can use tags with any app that has a note-taking capability. So sorry, Pocket users, I think Pocket doesn't have annotation capability, so you can highlight something, but you cannot use the tagging system because there's no annotation functionality. So I would recommend use Instapaper, not only is it cheaper, you can also also add notes, so that that's one tip for from me for you. Um, but yeah, essentially any app that has annotation capabilities and that works with 
uh, readwise. So again, these you can you can use the tagging system. When it comes to PDFs, um, yes, it works. I've tested it um, and it went completely wrong. It went horribly wrong. <laughs> so I've already had a um, already had a conversation with Tristan about this, who is the lead developer and co-founder of uh, of uh, Readwise, and he said it's a little bit wonky right now with PDFs. So use it. Well, use it, uh, uh, I, but be warned. It, it doesn't work perfectly. So um, for now, I would I would still recommend Zotero. I use Zotero for my PDFs and then Zot file. I will put it in the chat how to write it. Um, if I can find the chat button. So Zotero plus Zot file. Zot file is a plugin so you can extract uh, highlights from PDFs. And I prefer that one over Readwise currently for PDFs because it's it's still in beta. Um, and one more question, does Twitter, Medium, or Instapaper need to be linked with Readwise using IFTT or Zapier? No, no. no. So all integrations work directly. You do have to set it up. So you do need to go into Readwise um, and you have to click add highlights. Oh, oops. Um, so you have to set up Twitter once. So here it says, um, here, it's, here it gives all the instructions. So you essentially go to Readwise, you click add highlights and then you click Twitter and you have to set it up once. So I've already set it up. So now I can essentially, I can just mention Readwise. But the cool thing is I can also send a tweet. So I can D, uh, DM, direct message, a, t a tweet to Readwise. Uh, and I can even add my notes to it. So when, for example, when I click, Let's uh, let's do a short demo. So, uh, for example, I went to a safe case uh, tweet here, and I say readwise. Add anything I type here becomes a readwise note. So now I can save it. And now, in theory, we should be able to go to Readwise, uh, see tweets. Let's say, can I find K? Not yet. Uh, maybe need some time. I will. I will go back in a bit because it's uh, it's pretty cool how it works. All right. Um, can you DM an entire thread? Yes, you can. Um, but you have to mention, I think, the word threat in the, in the message, I think, to save the entire thread. Um, and can you concatenate within Readwise after extracting the highlights? No, but we'll go into, we'll, we'll move into that right now because we go into editing highlights. So uh, there are a few ways to, uh, to review in Readwise. Um, let's take my notes. So there are a few ways to uh, review highlights and notes in, uh, in Readwise. First of all, there's daily Readwise. So you get an email or you can go into your app or just using the web app and you select the daily Readwise and you see up to 15 highlights a day. Um, and they are picked for you. So they're randomly using an algorithm they're picked for you. What I've noticed, I don't, I don't have uh, evidence. It actually works like this, but I think it works like this. Um, every day, Readwise will pick 15 highlights and it will try to determine what is the topic of those highlights. And then it will try to find 15 highlights that are somehow related. So for example, if I have highlights about teaching, 
uh, it will search for highlights that are about teaching. So one day it will show me all the highlights that, or 15 highlights that have to do with teaching. Uh, once I discovered that, for me, it became a really cool learning tool because that way I can have serendipitous encounters with my own highlights that I took in the past. So instead of reviewing highlights from one book at a time, I actually have my data readwise. I go through them, I throw the, the highlights, and I see how some ideas from completely different books, or sorry, that's some completely different books talk about the same ideas. And some days the Readwise algorithm is so good that even though the, the language is completely different, it can still find related highlights. So I really like to use it uh, to jog my memory and to see, okay, what have I been thinking about? And some days it's just spot on and I find some new highlights that I had forgotten completely or, or some books that are somehow related to, to something I'm interested in currently. Um, um, and then, so that it's daily readwise. You can also look per article and in a timeline and it will show you in a bit how that, what it looks like. And what I then do is I do progressive summarization in uh, Readwise. So um, I will show you in a bit how this works, but this is an overview of, uh, of the shortcuts. It uses, so Readwise uses Markdown. You can just mark up highlights using Markdown. So bold text, uh, text, it's a, a double star, single star for it italicized and highlight text, it's a double underscore. And obviously there are also uh, shortcuts you can use. So let's move into highlighting. So currently I am, I am in scrolling view. So this is one of the ways to uh, look at highlights. Um, but I can also go into review mode. And what that does is I then see one highlight at a time. And it even tells me here, it even tells me if I've already seen this highlight or if, I've, if I'm seeing this uh, for the first time. So here it says that this is your first time reviewing this passage and you highlighted it on August 18th. So it even tells me when I highlighted it. It gives me a few options so I can, I can very quickly give it, uh, give the review mechanism, I can give it feedback. So I can say, I don't want to see this um, highlight anymore, or I just want to keep it. So this is the most simple level, but I can give it more granular feedback. So for those who have been using, uh, who are familiar with Anki, for example, they will be familiar with this. So I can tell how soon I want to see this highlight again. And again, I get the, the option to never see it, see it soon, um, later, and eventually. And this will update the algorithm. So depending on what option I choose, it will, it will show the highlight, it will resurface the highlight sooner or later for me. Um, and what the way I do it mostly, I mostly use the, uh, the review view to, to do progressive summarization. So what I do now is I simply hit the E button and I go into editing mode. So now I can add a note, I can type a note here, or I can say, oh, I want to bolt this. So for those who are not familiar with progressive summarization, progressive summarization is um, editing your highlights in a way that you can skim them. So for example, if I have a very long highlight and not everything is relevant, just the, just the same thing I sh I've shown that I cut and that I cut phrases, I do the same thing with bolding. So I tell myself what the, the highlight is about by bolding the most important parts. And by bolding the most important parts, I can just read those parts and already know what the gist is of the highlight, which saves tremendous time um, when, when reviewing my highlights later on. Um, so what I do that here in Readwise as I'm reviewing my, my highlights and I can just simply hit Command B on Windows, it's Control B and now it's, it's, uh, um, it's bolded. If I save it now, 
and I edit it, you can see this is the, the short code. So if I would remove one star, oh, it would become italicized. So that's how Readwise Markup works. And the beauty of it is when I then export this to Evernote or Notion or Rome, all the markup that I did in Readwise will also be exported through Rome or to my note taking app. So I can go, yes. Ramses, it, it's good that you mentioned that because Cliff asks when he makes those enhancements in his Readwise, it doesn't show up in his Evernote or Notion. Oh, that's weird because in my Readwise it does, or in my Rome it does end up as, uh, so I'm thinking. So if, if I may, Ramses, if I may just yeah, clarify. Yeah, sure, sure. So if, sure. I've, if I have the note uh, already imported into Readwise and mm -hmm. Readwise has already exported it to Evernote, if then I then go back and make changes uh, to the note in Readwise, I don't see those updates in the file in Evernote. So once it's in Evernote, it's, it will add additional notes, you know, uh, that you make to that book, but it doesn't yeah. seem to go back and add uh, the edits that I've made in Readwise to the notes. So, so once it's in your note-taking environment, it seems like the only way to then progressively summarize whatever is in the note-taking environment and not in Readwise. Is that correct? Yeah, you're correct. Um, there's a way you can delete the notes. You can delete the notes and then it will sync again and then it will grab a fresh copy out of Readwise. So if whatever you've done uh, in, in Readwise will then be synced. Um, actually, this is the reason I only export high, uh, books that I've already reviewed in Readwise. So I like to review my highlights and my notes in Readwise of books, of articles, I, I cannot be bothered. So all my article highlights are turned off for review. Uh, they just go one-on-one -on -one to, to Rome and someday I will probably re-encounter them. But for books, I mean, reading a book, first of all, a book is already a distillation of useful ideas. And then I invest about 10 hours in reading a book and I, went, I wanted to, to, I want to get most out of it. So I use Readwise to review. It even keeps track of how many highlights I've reviewed because if I go back to my books, it says here, you've reviewed 20 out of your 135 highlights in this book. So it will even tell me, have I reviewed the book? Um, so for me, it's very useful. And it, 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 it's almost uh, a forcing function to actually go through my highlights. But yeah, you're right, Cliff. Um, it doesn't update it, uh, the, the markup. And you're right, because I did ask Tristan a while ago and he said that's currently not the case. So you have to delete the uh, notes. But I think they are working on it at least for Notion and Rome. But I think for that to work, they, have, they need an API. So it's a little bit more, I don't want to become too technical, but there's a technical uh, limitation currently for that, I think. Thank you. And if I may, Troy has a follow-up to this was how do you set the filters to auto sync articles, uh, but hold books until you manually, until you manually sync. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover that in a bit. We'll cover that in a bit and I need to speed up. I realize <laughs> this is my, this is a bane of my existence. I talk way too much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so that is, oh, and before we, before we go to the output uh, part, I want to also show you how you can actually use this as a space repetition system, because what I've sh shown just now, the review and the, the, the options, it's nice, but there is no challenge in that. So what I would do is, oh, let's go in uh, review mode. Um, let's look at this. Okay, um, let's see, yeah, all right. So for example, here, I also have the master option. So um, I can do a close deletion. So that's just the fill in the blanks exercise. I can, um, for example, I don't know, um, for example, fuzzy. And whenever I review this, I have to, 
I'm quizzing myself and I think, okay, what's the word here? And I think, oh yeah, fuzzy. I do review uh, key phrase and I see it here. Um, but oh, let's see, can I now, oh, you, you'll see that I can now, yeah. All right. But I can also do a question and answer, which is actually real flashcards. So again, for those familiar with Anki, this is, this is really how Readwise can, uh, can make your life easier. So you have a, the front, which is the question, and then the answer. And the beauty of, of Readwise is instead of typing an answer, I can just say, use highlight text as answer, and it will, whoop, it will just grab the whole highlight. And I can even, again, um, progressively summarize this if I want. I can bold stuff, I can highlight stuff. Well, I like this work here now, it seems. But I have complete freedom with my highlights. So that's what I wanted to, to also show because I think this is one function that people often look over, gloss over, because they think, oh, I just want to extract my highlights and then move them on to my, uh, to my note-taking app. Whereas I think this is really useful to rewire uh, re your brain. Um, and expose yourself to ideas without it feeling actually like work. So for me, reviewing my flashcards doesn't feel like work. It's just a game for me. All right, a lot to cover. <laughs> so um, let's see, let's go back to the notes. I've covered space repetition. Again, and these are in the, uh, in the outline I've just posted in my public database. So you can you can review these. Uh, for output, this is where most people use it um, just to export to their note-taking app. I have a little bit of a different workflow because as, she, as you saw before, I add to certain highlights, I have the tweet it tag. So what I do when I'm reviewing, I try to get at least one tweetable highlight from each review session. So I'm, I'm actually hunting for tweets while I'm reviewing, which sounds a little bit crazy because I should, you should be doing this for yourself. But I like to use Twitter to, to force myself to rephrase an idea and to stir a little bit of a discussion because when I post this to Twitter, many times I will, I will hear from people, from followers who are interested in the same ideas and they will, for example, add to the, the position or the, the opinion I tweeted out, or they will point me to other useful content. So it's a really good, good tool to tweet out your favorite highlights because you will find people who are interested in the same stuff you are interested in. You actually dis, better distill what you've read because you're actually writing your tweet and you will revisit it as people and uh, uh, comment on it or like it. So even I use Twitter as a space repetition system almost, just by tweeting out interesting things. And people will like things from, uh, from me that I posted months ago. So sometimes I get a notification that someone liked a tweet of mine, which is a highlight, and I see that highlight again. So it almost works like a space repetition system. I know it, it sounds silly, but for me, it really did wonders to think through ideas by tweeting uh, about them. And sometimes even I create entire threads. So if I go to Twitter and let's see, uh, make it stick. So in these cases, I go, I go a little bit crazy. So I, I make this into a very polished thread. And these are all images that I directly export out of Readwise. So um, there's just a share function in Readwise and you can save uh, a highlight and it will create something like this. So I save this. Um, I've drafted this in Rome. So my highlights, everything is in Rome. And uh, then I, I put it to, uh, to Twitter. Uh, if there are no questions, let me, uh, let me see, are there questions before I dive into the integration? Because this can be a little bit confusing what I'm going to show now. Okay. 
All right, let's continue. Um, I'm going to try to finish this within five minutes and then we'll open for Q&A and, &A. and I, will stick, I will stick for longer than the hour if there are questions. Um, so yeah, export. As you can see, uh, there are three ways to export. There are actually more ways to export. Um, so there are more ways than these three to export. So if you use any other note-taking app, you can go to a book for example, we'll use the same example. And I'm so to go over again. Under browse, I went to books and I get my list of books and I click this arrow, drop down arrow. And I get a few options. So this is to tune my daily read wise. I can remove the book, but I can also export the highlights as markdown. So all markup, it's it's saved in Readwise and I can export it. So if you use any other app than Evernote or Notion or Row, you can use this option to export your, your notes and highlights out of uh, Readwise. So there's always a way to export. Uh, for now, I will all only have a look at Row, the Roam export. So the way this works is with a browser plugin so if you open this page for the first time um, and you've never exported to row you get this button to first download the the plugin it's a browser plugin so it were it's a chrome uh, plugin and i think they also have one for firefox but the chrome plugins work on brave they work on vivaldi they on all chromium browsers so i use brave and it works flawlessly you can then use you, you can then choose the database you want to export to. I've disabled this the automatic exporting um, because I want to I want to manually uh, choose what I export. I do keep the highlight uh, locations and I use the custom formatting. So if I do this, you see it will just use the formatting that uh, Readwise uses. I don't like this template that they have, so I have created my own. I'll zoom in a little bit. So the page, I can change the page title. I have this, I have the system that I put the type of content always as the first word. So if it's an article, book, or whatever, then a slash, which in Rome is called a namespace, uh, this part, and then I have the title. And then I have very, very lightweight metadata. So I have the author. Um, I put it between uh, double brackets, so it becomes a link automatically. Um, if there's a source URL, it will grab the source, and then I have tags. Uh, but in this case, currently, Rome, all, uh, sorry, Readwise only allows me to uh, so essentially put the category here. So I cannot even currently I cannot export the, the tags that I created within Readwise. Um, and then there's the highlights header. Um, so you have all the metadata and then the highlights start. And then in the case of um, in the case of Rome, you will get something like, let's see. Okay. Hopefully it's not going to crash now. <laughs> yeah, so for example, this, you get, you get something like this. I, I've edited this myself. Um, so you get the highlights and then you get uh, nested underneath all the highlights. Um, I can even set up a notification. And then here at the bottom, I select which I want to export. And hey, as we can see here, um, case um, tweet that I just saved has been picked up and it automatically um, selects the 10 latest books articles that I've highlighted. So what I always do is select none and then I only select what I want to export um, in this moment. Otherwise, I get the problem that Cliff just pointed out that, for example, I have highlights that I haven't progressively summarized, but they still show up. And 
at that point, you can do anything with, with it, what you want. So um, I know it's a lot of content and my head is spinning myself <laughs> that I just explained this all within an hour. I hope it was clear. Um, and I'm going to open the floor for Q&A. And uh, again, I use Readwise a lot, but I'm not a creator, so I don't know everything, but I'm going to try to answer all of your questions. You are a creator, you just don't realize it. Um, <laughs> the one question that came through while you were doing that demo is, will the custom formatting changes here be saved for future exports? Uh, sorry, what do you mean with the, oh, uh, sorry, what do you mean with the custom formatting? You mean the uh, metadata? Tommy, that was from you, custom formatting changes he made in Rome or, or where? You want to come yeah, on no. the mic? In Readwise, so I'm just curious, if you make a change here and then you export, uh, say I come back in a week and I want to export more, more books, is the changes here going to be applied the same or do I have to remake these uh, custom changes to the uh, Readwise export formats? You, you mean the metadata? Yes. Uh, the metadata is saved. So okay. um, um, what it does is you, 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 and this is a little bit technical if you look at here, but this, this code, what it says is it asks if, is, is it a new page? And if it's a new page, it will create a heading with highlights and then it will put all the highlights under. Um, and then if the page already exists, um, but there are new highlights, it will just add those new highlights to the same page. Uh, but if we look at all these other tags and metadata, if I, if I do a change here, let's see, click outside of it, it should save, it should save, let's see. And on that, uh, yeah, so it's safe. It's safe. Okay, right, and then if if I uh, go through the the progressive summarization and I edit a highlight or I add a note, and the book book has already been exported into Rome, do you know if it's going to find that highlight and, and update it, or how does how does it handle that? Yeah, that that's exactly what Cliff just asked. Uh, so it doesn't currently. Um, what you would need to do is delete the page from um, Rome, if, if you use Rome, or if you use Readwise, uh, sorry, Notion, <laughs> um, then you have to delete that page, because then Readwise will see, does the page exist? And if not, it will create the page and it will pull all of the highlights out of your Readwise accounts for that book or article. So if you progressively summarized, um, then it will pull all those progressive summarization in as well but you have to delete the, the page and it's a little bit of a hassle. I know Readwise is working on updating um, highlights, but currently they have a, they're running into a te technical uh, limitation. I hope that answers the question. Yep, thank you. Perfect. Any other questions? Uh, hi, Rances. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Uh, hi, Wendy. I wanna, I wanna know: Do you do all your progressive summarization entirely in Readwise, and you don't move at all from there until everything is done? Yes, for books. So I only do progressive summarization in Readwise for books. So I also uh, highlight articles, but I just export those one-on-one. -on -one. So I don't review those highlights in Readwise. But for books, yes, I do uh, review them. I do progressive summarization in uh, Readwise as well. And once I've completely progressively summarized it or reviewed all the highlights of a book, then I will turn it on for export. So then it is exported. Okay, so your articles go automatic or all your export is manual? You, you yeah, it. yeah. So, yeah. So, I will share my screen so you can see it. So, I will. So, I will select what I want to export. So, I know this is a book, and I've not completely read it yet, and I've also not completely reviewed it. So, I'm going to skip it. So, I'm only selecting what I do want to 
uh, and I know this is also a book. So this, uh, for example, then I will export it. Uh, but the books I will skip until I've completely reviewed them and progressively summarized them within uh, Readwise. Again, that's my workflow. And that's only because I use re the review functionality of Readwise. And I also use the question and answers. So I know many people who don't want to use Readwise for that. And they, don't want, they do want to do progressive summarization, but they say, I'm not going to do that in Readwise. Then don't follow my um, approach. But for me, this works, I've noticed. I, and I like it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I see. And when you are, how do, how, how do you integrate Instapaper only for articles from, <clears throat> sorry, from online articles you find on the surface? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just remember the books that I'm reading and I uh, unselect them. So for example, normally they, I've, I've just uh, selected none, but normally I would see something like this and I would look, okay, what is a book that I don't want to export? And I know this is a book, this is a book, and this is a book. The rest I can export. So the rest oh. is just exported. <laughs> and how is the paper plays a role in all of this? It's, so for example, this comes from Instapaper. Um, um, so all, you all, all, all my articles come from Instapaper. Okay. So all but the articles you, you see here. Yeah. All that, eh, sorry to interrupt you, but the, the, um, the C1, C2, C3, and H1, H2, H3, do you do that on Instapaper or in Readwise? No, no I do that in Instapaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you cannot later add the tag, I think. Well, I'm saying it, I, I, I've never tried it, but I don't think it works. So you have to do it in, um, in uh, paper. yes. So what I would do, and I mean, I, I can, I can show. Because I use Instapaper and I just want to follow your settings since you invest so many hours. So I'm just start from there. <laughs> That's what I'm Yeah. Do. Okay. Let, let's take an example. So, um, um, I think I have, so I have a few notes here. Let's see. Yeah. So what I do here, I have this highlight. I've highlighted this. And I've highlighted it in um, Instapaper. And I use Instapaper's um, note-taking capabilities to add .c1. And this, the, here you can see .c2. And then Readwise imports these highlights and they it glues it together. So that's uh, how it works. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Um, let's see, Cam, I think you have your hand raised. Yeah. Yep, uh, awesome. Ramses, uh, thank you so much for this. You're blowing my mind. Also, Lindsay, thank you for keeping this machine rolling. Um, again, seriously, no idea you could do all this. And I love it that you use Twitter as a game. Question is, how do you know if it's working? Um, is it, you can tell it's being more efficient? Is it, if you're, not, if you're saying you're not a creator, uh, you know, I, I make videos and I do education around videos. So for me, output's pretty easy to measure. Am I producing? How do you know this is working? And because you're obviously changing it a lot. I want to know what's guiding you on that process. Yeah, well, I, I think I'm slowly becoming a creator because I'm just th thinking out loud now uh, online about this kind of stuff. Uh, before, when I just used this in my work, I was always the person with the answers. So that's why I, that's how I knew I, it worked. And I was I was into uh, I worked in policy making, so I worked for an HR department, and I was we were very heavy on legislation and uh, following like legislation and uh, for example, uh, GDPR guidelines that we had to follow. And I and I had to write policy, so I was doing a lot of research about into laws. Um, and I just had to write articles and memos and proposals and I had to pull in quotes and I had to support my case with evidence and I could always find what I wanted because it works so well. Everything that flow, everything that I highlight in the paper or Kindle, wherever, I know it will end up in my Rome database because it works so well. So 
in the beginning, in all fairness, I've sent dozens of emails to the Readwise team because I ran into bugs or whatever, um, and things were not working as expected. But now I, I really believe it works as it should work. And for me, it has helped me um, provide the answers that I had to provide in my, in my job. And now that I'm not in that line of work anymore and I'm transitioning into creating online, um, I'm, I'm seeing it really works because I can show you, um, let's see if I search for Readwise, just prepare, preparing for this, I had, so let's see, um, I was writing, let's see, to, yeah, so I, I was writing this article all based on research I did before. So this, this is all research that it's pretty meta. So I did research using Readwise about Readwise. <laughs> um, but it works because I can I can create an outline so quickly. I have just my highlights that I pull in and my notes from Readwise. So th this comes directly from Readwise, which is exported to to uh, uh, my Rome database, and I create a an outline like in 15, 20 minutes. Now that I'm creating, just because I have all my notes highlights that flow into Rome. And then um, I do review them shortly in Rome to link them up because obviously that's, that's not, well, it's, it's possible in, in Readwise, but it's a hassle. I mean, I don't have the autocomplete and everything. So I, I prefer to link in, in, in Rome, but yeah, it works in my, in my experience for my line of work. Um, and I've heard many people, um, say the same, but obviously once you have your highlights in your note taking app, if you then don't have a workflow to actually do something with it, probably I should do a session about that in the future, how I actually use my highlights and notes to then create an article to outline an article and to then write an article because that's how I, uh, how I use it nowadays. Very long winded answer, but hopefully it, it makes things a little bit clearer. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Troy, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I was just curious about your process with air and how you're finding that. Because um, it seems like in, in my process, it almost seems like it's necessary to go into air and sort of clean up the clips and air quotes before mm -hmm. before they get too far down down the chain. But I was just curious how you're doing that. Yeah, uh, I've tried air. Um, it's exactly the, the, the issue I run into because I can, I can clip something, but to really be useful and again, to be an at atomic highlight, I have to adjust the clip first. Yeah. So um, I've stopped doing that. <laughs> I, uh, and I will show you how I take, how I take podcast uh, notes, uh, but it's pretty labor intensive. So um, for example, this one, uh, yeah. So this is, this is how I create notes. So this is very manual. So I just listen times two and I take notes. If I'm on the move, I use, I write this in Dynalist or drafts because on Melba doesn't really work in, in yeah. Rome. Yeah. Then I clean it up. So yeah, podcast for me, it's my least favorite learning tool. I, in, in, in levels of, of how useful for me it is, it's always first books then articles, then even tweets. So first everything that's text-based and then everything that's audio-based. So I don't have a good answer for it, sorry, because I run into the same problem you run into. Yeah, I think it'll improve hopefully with the Rome uh, API and, and Readwise being able to update notes. Cause I find that I'll listen to podcasts throughout a week and then I almost need to just keep it from going into Rome and then yeah go into air, go into air every, at some cadence and then sort of refine what those are, which I find, I, I think even in that is a step to, for that sort of, uh, it bringing it to, to light to, for some of the uh, repetition based stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, um, Tim Ferriss, he is still very much paper based and he had a video 
recently. And um, he sees when he writes something on paper and then reviews it to put it in his note-taking app, he sees that as, if, uh, um, how does he, what word did he use? Um, he calls it a, wow, a pass, yeah. <laughs> so he has multiple passes of the mm -hmm. same material. And it's for him, it's a feature, not a bug, because he says, I just want, I've written it something down. It's worth reviewing. Otherwise, I shouldn't have written it down. And I find the same. So I don't really find it that bad to review something multiple times because it, it moves my thinking forward. And it also helps me to only have highlights that are actually worth it because I, if I just highlight everything, I'm burdening my future self. So I'm trying to avoid that. But for Eric, yeah, um, for me, it takes a little bit of fun out of listening to, to a podcast if I have to adjust it very, very, uh, yeah, every, every time I've listened to podcasts, I don't know. Yeah, and e even so much, not so much with the clips themselves, but if it's just a note that you're making. So like I'll use the note feature with an app or with an error, even if the transcript isn't for like even if they haven't or transcribed that entire podcast, mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's pretty valuable too. Just to add yeah. the note taking feature, and then and then you have the context if you ever want to go back to it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and I think probably now that you say that, I think that's a really good approach to not worry too much about the highlights to to have it to use it more like a nice to have. Because personally, I all when I listen to podcasts, I always take notes. I so even even when uh, Air started with the automatic transcription, I never looked at the transcription. I just was listening and taking notes. Uh, because yeah, I find yeah. that the most valuable way to listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to use that. I, I like that. Maybe it takes a little bit away a little bit of the uh, the pressure. Because because they don't transcribe. I don't think they transcribe automatically. It's just based on yet yeah, if if people. I think each user gets like two requests, and so by by mm. just the volume, a lot of the most popular ones are transcribed. But a lot of the ones to listen to, or if they're private feeds, um, they yeah. won't be transcribed. You can just use it more for yeah that note, that quick note taking, especially if you're on the run then, and just being able to use like the previous track to to clip it seems pretty valuable. Cool. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, let's see the chat. Um, <laughs> I see a question from Stefan. Uh, what are your views on dino lists? Um, well, in the last six months, I haven't commuted, but before I was always using it um, while commuting because it it's it's such a a nice app to use on the go. So um, I only used the mobile app until recently. Um, and now many times I just used uh, drafts for quick thoughts. Let's see. Um, what else? I see Jeff, can you add notes after .c1? Yes, you can. You just hit uh, return and then you write your notes. Um, what else? Um, are there any questions? Just raise your hand or speak up. Otherwise, we are going to put an end to the, uh, to the session. I have a question with the highlights. When you actually take the progressive summarization and you use the short codes, do you use it in that way? Because you don't have any other way how to use like a graphic highlight or you just use the, the short code? Um, you mean in Readwise, if you can use yeah. highlight as well? Yeah, yeah. You, you can, yeah, you can highlight. Um, they're, they're, um... Because I noticed you, you use more the short codes. So maybe because it's faster for you. Oh yeah, but what, so what Readwise does is I can write the short codes, but I can also use a shortcut. So to make something bold, I use the control or the command B. B. 
Then for italicized, I use uh, Command or Control I. And then for highlighted, it's a little bit weird. They use the Command U. So normally it would be underlined. And I can use a short code, but if I just use a shortcut and I save it, then mm -hmm. Readwise will type or create the short code for me, so to say. Ah, oh, I see. So, if I, I don't know if I can show this very quickly. Let's see, okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So, okay, let's see. Um, let's say, so this is currently bolded actionability. Just going to save it. And let's say I want to, I want to bold this part, this mm -hmm. word. So I can type this and this will make it bolded. But I can also do, and now I'm going to type command B and you see it bolded. Uh, gotcha. But yeah, so, but when I save it now, so you, you see it's bolded, and when I edit it again, you'll mm -hmm. see Readwise will have added those short codes for me. Mm, Does that okay. make sense? Yes, yes. So there is no other intuitive, like with an icon or graphic, easy to remember. Yeah, so as you okay. can see here, edit and format your highlights below, you see instructions, you hover with Got your it. mouse, and you see format, use markdown to format highlights, and you get the three options. All right, thank you. So that's uh, that's how it works. And I think that's the last question then. Thank you all. I'm going to stop the recording.